Well, hi, everyone, and welcome back to Influence KC. Today, I am joined with the lovely Mark Schaefer. Um, so, Mark, why don't you just get us started? Like, um, give us the brief rundown of your career. Uh, yeah, so I am a principal and CFO at CRC Financial Services and another company we can talk about a bit later called Allos Investment Advisors. Primarily, what we do is help people kind of plan for the future, achieve their goals, and live their best ideal life, and finance is just a tool to get there. So, it's kind of fun just being a consultant of people living their best life. Awesome. Um, and so, I mean, throughout your career, you know, you mentioned you're doing a couple different things. I mean, what would you say was probably one of the bigger turning points in your career? Um, yeah, that's a good question. We, as a company, read a book a long time ago called Strength Finder by Marcus Buckingham. Um, at that time, we were a small company doing all things small enough where everybody had to do some of everything right and strength finder just kind of details what your five top strengths were i was really glad that mine became a focus of what workflow became because if you're content in what you're doing and naturally talented at um, the day seems to flow and you're a lot more content in what's going on and oddly enough through that exercise our team found out that what i might not like someone else did and so rearranged workflow and what everybody was focusing on. And so that's where I really got into an area where I felt like I was thriving successfully, whatever that meant to me back then. And it's primarily what I'm spending most of my time doing now. So it's evolved over time for sure, but that's helped a ton. That's awesome. Um, so, I mean, you know, as far as the strengths go and everything, I mean, what would you say are probably, um, you know, some of the top skills, like just crucial to succeeding in general? Uh, yeah, I, I like to think what I enjoy doing is connecting people and resources like a lot of successful people do. Um, it's interesting because I feel like in my position as a financial planner, I get to do that and I get to focus on it in such a way, regardless of whether I'm helping someone with financial planning or not. Uh, living their ideal life doesn't have to do anything with money sometimes. It could be connecting them to a future spouse or a new business partner or um, something that's going to get them further ahead and where they want to go. Um, I just happen to get paid as a career to do financial planning. So get to do this and then have it as a, um, what is it called? An occupation and a vocation. So um, it's kind of nice to be able to mix both. And fortunately at my company, my team provides me with the outlet to do that as part of my job, which is focusing and happens to be business development. Um, so didn't always get to do that and wasn't always comfortable with it, but more now than lately, connecting people and resources is my top priority. That's awesome. And especially like doing something you love. Um, I mean, would you say that that saying's right? You know, the, if you do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, yeah, I, honestly, I can see that in, um, the founder of my company who continues to work. And even though he's transitioned to business, he's doing a ton of that still. So I'm hoping to live in that same regard. What would you say like gets you up in the morning? Like what makes a good day versus a bad day for you? Um, again, it kind of goes back to working on the bigger picture and building something. I, I think it's nice that um, I'm a career person and a business owner, and I probably wouldn't be as motivated if I was an employee in a job, but I'm an owner in a business building something um, that creates a lot of freedom and the way that our team wants to. Fortunately, even the owners, non-owners on my team are very interested in being treated as an owner and moving in the same direction. So I think that that's kind of fun to be able to vision what we want this business to look like in the future. And then all of us work together to make that happen. Um, and then use the revenues from the firm to do awesome things in the community. It's kind of nice too. Um, so I'm a big fan of sponsoring events and doing things that kind of bring joy and people together anyways. Awesome. I mean, are there, do you have like any events coming up that you're sponsoring? Uh, yeah, I just sponsored a couple of them. Let's, the first one is STEMS at the Arboretum, which benefits the Arts and Recreation Foundation. Um, and the Arboretum is a beautiful place. There's wine um, and it's kind of a who's who of South Overland Park where I live and work. Um, so that's a fun event coming up in June. And then July is uh, Art that blows to benefit Band of Angels. Um, Mike Meyer happens to be in my Rotary Club, so I watched him start that charity from scratch. And their goal is to get instruments into the hands of people that might not otherwise be able to afford them. And then the other event, I just decided all three of them this past week, is going to be Harvesting Hope for Growing Futures Early Education. Um, 
uh, center, and that's a board that I serve on. That's a Head Start program for um, small kids, zero to five, that sometimes get overlooked in terms of education because they're learning as early as three weeks old, as early as the day they're born. So um, this gets help into those kids from families that um, are kind of underrepresented um, and kind of our disproportionate, disproportionate income in Overland Park. Wow. Uh, yeah, the art that blows. I'm actually going to that one. Okay. <laughs> so super excited. Yep. Um, cool. I mean, and so, you know, everything in your like work life, I mean, seems like pretty good for, <laughs> for now. I mean, what outside of your career has, um, what outside of work has like affected your career, whether that be like good or bad? Uh, that's an interesting question. I can talk for a bit about part of a good and bad thing about a career you love is you can spend all your time doing it and forgetting to focus on personal things. And so that was a problem for me, I don't know, six or seven years ago. I was single, which was fine, dating, which was fine, but kind of wanted the family that I now have, and now I have a newborn, so it's all manifested. But at that time, I was wondering what, uh, why I wasn't being able to find what I wanted in a family because I was so career focused. In order to get me to think about making that a priority, I needed someone else to kind of become an accountability partner. And at that time, I hired a, a life coach um, and did one-on-one -on -one coaching with this person for uh, I think six to nine months. And even to this day, six years later, I'm in group coaching with her, which is also a fun way to network with a group of people. She did it virtually during the pandemic, and we're still meeting virtually every Thursday for an hour. And that's a way to still get reminded of all those important things, but also do it in a collective manner with people that have kind of now become accountability partners, which is kind of awesome. But a life coach did did work and it did change my life for sure. Awesome. Um, and yeah, so like along the, the life coach road, like, I mean, what made you want to go out and do that? Was it just like you wanted to be in a place in your life that you weren't there or was there something else driving that? Um, yeah, I think it got interesting to find out that you can be very, very successful in certain areas of life and then forget about others and this life coach kind of made me focus on everything it's called the wheel you got to be kind of real well well rounded and so um for me I, I could have used a productivity coach a sales coach and those would have been fine but that would have just kept fostering the fact that i was neglecting some personal goals instead of career goals and so life coaching was uh, what i needed and as opposed to the alternatives um so that was it was kind of eye-opening and as you know there's as many life coaches now as there are financial planners they're everywhere which is great because you have options to choose from but my my life coach at the time kind of told me what i kind of knew i needed to hear but didn't want to hear where other coaches were like you should get involved in these five more things or consider doing that and I, at that point in life and a career i was looking to do less right so that's kind of weird advice is stop you know here's the things you should be doing but here's 10 things you need to stop doing which is just as important for sure. Definitely, for sure. Um, and so, you know, now this is where the questions take a shift into the hard hitting ones. So strap in. But uh, so do you think that suffering is required to achieve success? Um, that's a good question. I think that sacrifice is required for success. And maybe that's a generational thing. I feel like that there is still something to be said for paying your dues, um, but that doesn't mean everybody finds their success in that regard. I, I think I feel like that because I felt like I needed to do that. And so I think it's a generational thing. It'll be interesting to see how the younger um, generation comes up because I think they want to, I guess, instead of making a sacrifice, they want to make a difference. And that's kind of the way we've structured our new culture. But um, suffering, I don't, I don't like to think that. Sacrifice is different than suffering. Uh, yeah, def definitely. Sacrifices. I want this to happen, so I this can happen. Suffering is like, okay, this is just happening to me, so I get. That. Or I think, of, you know, I'm in the investment arena. That's what I do for a living: financial planning and investment management. So, like a lot of things, I like to think that if I add one plus one, it equals two. If I invest my time and I do this and I do everything right, here's what's out there. Unfortunately, as people know, at some businesses, that promised carrot out there never really happens. And so it gets the frustration rat wheel of keep trying, trying, trying to grab it and they don't. And that's why I think it's 
really important for the business leaders today to actually give people the experience of the care, whatever that is. For me, it was ownership in a company and the, the founder of my company was true to his word and offering it very early. Um, and it's come full swing in a full succession plan with, with him and my other business partners. It's worked out really well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so I'm going to keep these next uh, three questions as broad as possible. So take them as you please. But what do you love? Um, that's a good question. I thrive on meeting new people and being out and finding out what motivates them. Um, much different than networking. I will admit that the big group networking I don't enjoy as much, but when I sit down and actually get to know somebody, I'd rather have a coffee with someone. And I find that what seems like a should be blocked for an hour ends up an hour and a half and two hours. And by then you're talking about very personal things that are, um, I don't know what the word is, intimate or stuff you don't share with everybody. And that can be said on my networking and development of getting to know people as well as on a client base, because opening up about money can be a very personal thing, as well as carry with it the baggage of how people grew up or the way they were raised. And so I think um, I like that, but I also like in my profession, hearing the story of how someone found success, whether that's this ultimate decision on changing a career or this investment and that, it's just everybody gets there one way or another, and there's no definition of what success is. That can be different for everybody. Most people think it's by money. Others, it's time and freedom. And so I just like hearing the stories of how people found that. Yeah, for sure. And on the flip side of that, what do you fear? Um, that's a good question. You know, I'm in the investment business, so I fear volatility and loss, but I've learned to get over it because the long term, it always ends up fine. And now that I've been in this industry long enough, I know it's going to be fine. And I, I believe in the innovation of um, our people and our country and the world um, that we can get past tough things. But in the interim, the volatility creates opportunity, whether that's in relationship, the stock market, economic cycles. Um, I do, I did get scared of those for a while, but I've seen them snap back and create really good things from them as well. So that just happens to be my business and, and life fear, I suppose. Yeah. And then, um, on the, on the other side of, you know, what do you fear? What do you love? I mean, what do you desire? Um, lately I've been living on the quote of you trade time for money, um, because I want more time than money now, if that makes sense. I'm at a point in my career um, where I, I want to be able to do the things I want to do. And oddly enough, sometimes that means more work, right? Um, but I also am excited to get back to traveling um, and the pandemic has put a halt on that. As you may know from our initial conversation, I really enjoy um, getting out and traveling all over the world. I, I like hiking. I like getting myself out of comfort zones in terms of altitudes and uh, remote places that kind of um, let you think about or slow down enough in life to think about what you really want. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting back to some of that um, stuff that Life Coach helps with as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, I mean, throughout you know, your career and everything, if you could go back to 20 year old Mark and give him some advice, what would you say? Um, there's a quote that says, if I did it all over again, I'd make the same mistakes, but I'd make them faster. And uh -huh. so I think a lot of people fear things no different than I did. And then when you make the mistake, you learn from it and then you move on from it. But it's the anticipation of making a mistake that slows you in your development, I think. Um, and some mistakes lead you to the next best thing or the next chapter you needed to have in your life anyway. So there's no reason to delay it or get scared for it. It's just make it. <laughs> you don't know it's a mistake when it's happening, but make it move forward and kind of uh, improve because of it. Awesome. Um, and, you know, last question. So you have done a really good job of building a network, even though you prefer the one-on-one -on -one networking to the networking events and everything. So what would you say made your most successful um, business relationships? Like how did you even get those started? Oh, I just decided a long time ago that I was a yes person to meeting anybody. I didn't care if it was someone that was in my industry that's a competitor. I really believe if it's a competitor, we're all trying to help the end result, which is helping clients, right? So it's not like I'm trading clients with or stealing clients. It was, let's look at this as a broader scope of helping. 
Um, and I think that because of that, I've just decided the people I meet, I don't care if they're, everybody's got an agenda. I just want to add value. And if you add value to the marketplace, even outside of what you're doing for a living, it comes back to you. So I think that I just approach that with finding out what do people need and want or who can I connect them with to get there. And it's become a pretty, uh, I'll just say it's paid dividends down the road in, in ways that I wouldn't have imagined um, in career, personal satisfaction, happiness, um, and watching people succeed. One of my one of my best business um, clients came from uh, someone that had an interest in getting involved in my career. And so I, I let them come to Kansas City from out of town. They um, sat and learned about what we did and then life happened and this person did not pursue a career in financial planning, but they became a referral resource for me. So they, they started sending some of my best clients and people I really enjoy working with because I tried to help them do what I'm doing. So I didn't expect that, um, but that's a fun thing. Just if you're open to it, uh, put it out there and it comes back. Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much, Mark, for um, taking the time to chat with me today. I really do appreciate it. So, I mean, last 10, 15 seconds, I'm rolling out the red carpet for you. Um, what kind of connections are you looking to make? Um, you know, maybe shout out those events really quick one more time because I had you talk about them too early. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I'm on board development for Growing Futures, so I'm looking to find people that are interested in early childhood education because I want people to join the board at Growing Futures. Um, the board represents um, or represents a school of people that are a uh, third African-American, a third Hispanic, and a third other, very little of which is white Caucasian men. So I'm looking to build that board in terms of diversity for the future, like a lot of boards continue to look for, but if we're gonna represent the families, we want the board to be representative who we're, we're helping. So I'm definitely interested in that. That Harvesting Hope event is not until October, so you'll see more in my social media feed. Um, but other things I'm looking to meet with the people that love international travel, I hope to get back to that real soon. And I do the inviting of that for friends that have planned it. I hope that continues in 2023, um, and it'll be to some pretty cool spots. We haven't been to Australia, New Zealand. Yeah, so we're not going to